Hello and welcome to O-Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of the kidney. So this is a cow kidney I have here. It's not exactly the same as human kidneys, but it's very similar and a good specimen for us to learn about mammalian kidneys. So the kidneys are the filters of the human body. They filter around 45 gallons of blood per day, which is enough blood to fill a small bathtub. The kidneys serve two main functions. The first function is to remove nitrogenous wastes from the body. The second function is to maintain the electrolyte, acid base, and fluid balances of the blood. The waste that is produced is then stored in the bladder as urine and later expelled from the body. So let's take a look at the kidney. Your kidney is roughly the size of your fist and is shaped like a bean like a kidney bean. But this is a lot larger because it's from a cow. It's also not quite bean shaped. You can see it's very bumpy and this is because the cow's kidney is divided into about 12 sections called lobules. So this would be an example of a lobule and here's another one. Also fun fact, horse kidneys are heart shaped. The kidney also has a slight bluish tinge to it, as you can see here, bluish pink. Normal kidneys aren't blue or pink, of course. This kidney is triple injected, which means it's been injected with colored latex to highlight some features. Arteries are labeled red, veins are labeled blue, and collecting ducts are labeled yellow. You'll see this more when we cut open the kidney later in the video. Kidneys come in pairs, one on each side of your body. Each kidney has about 1.5 million blood filtering units called nephrons, but people only need a minimum of 300,000 nephrons to filter blood properly. Because of this, you can get one of your kidneys removed and function just fine. However, what's interesting is that for children born with only one kidney, the lone kidney grows till it has the combined weight of two. Your body likes to be redundant, I suppose. Great, so now let's take a look at some of the structures. So you'll see three pipe-like things attached to the side of the kidney here. And the one that is covered in most fat, so this one right here, you can see all of the fat that I can dig through. This is the ureter, which is a long tube. It continues on a lot more than this, and it takes the urine from the kidney to the bladder. So this is the ureter, and you can see again, it's really covered in fat. Great, now looking at these two, the thicker one here is the renal artery, which takes blood into the kidney, and the thinner one here, which has been cut open, this is the renal vein, which carries blood out of the kidney. So now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. So we actually lost the footage of us bisecting the kidney, but basically what you do is you take a scalpel and you cut it in half just down the midline, like this, all the way around in multiple strokes. And then you can open it up like a book, like that. Let me just finish cutting through this section right here. And there we go. So I'm just going to move one half away, and we'll take a closer look at the other half. So now you can see the lobules kind of dividing the cow kidney, like we did before bisecting the kidney. So you can see here is a lobule, right here, and there is another one. Oh, and fun fact, in developing human fetuses, the kidneys are also similarly lobed. Our lobes just all merge into one another to form a smooth bean later on. So back to the kidney, this outer beige layer, which you can see right here, all along the kidney, is called the cortex. I'll put a pin here to mark the area, right there. Actually, let me move it somewhere where it's easier to see. So this is the cortex right here, where the pin is. 
I mentioned before that the functional unit of the kidney is a structure called a nephron. So the blood first enters the nephron, here in the cortex, right here, through a structure called the glomerulus. You can see all of the blood vessels running through the cortex, all throughout. And once the blood enters the glomerulus, the glomerulus is like a sieve. It catches many things in the blood, like red blood cells or larger proteins. Around 20% of the fluid in the blood passes through the glomerulus and is called the filtrate. The filtrate then enters the Bowman's capsule, which is basically just a cup that surrounds the glomerulus to catch whatever makes its way through. After that, it passes through another segment, called the proximal tubule, after which it enters the loop of Henle. So the loop of Henle is a literal loop, and this is where we get into this reddish, brownish layer beneath the cortex called the medulla. So all of this, all of this is the medulla. I'll put a pin in here too, so it's easier to see. The loop of Henle is basically where the body goes, whoops, we overshot, and takes back a lot of the water and ions from the filtrate. So the loop goes a bit like this. It loops around and makes its way back here to the cortex. So 85% of nephrons have loops of Henle that are short and only reach slightly into the medulla like this. These are called cortical nephrons. The other 15% are called juxtamedullary nephrons and have loops of Henle that reach all the way down deep into the medulla like this. You can also see here that the medulla is divided into triangular segments, like this, and these are called the renal pyramids. So here is the base of the pyramid, and here's the tip of the pyramid, which you can't see that well because it's white. Great. So this white area in the center of the kidney is called the renal pelvis, not to be confused with the bone pelvis. So I'll put our third pin right here. And after going through the loop of Henle, the filtrate passes through a structure called the collecting duct, which then all drains into the pelvis right here through these tubes called the calyxes. So you can kind of see the cross sections of these yellow tubes here, and those are the calyxes. And all of the calyxes all drain into the renal pelvis which is basically a hollow funnel for all the galaxies. And from there, the urine passes out through the ureter to the urinary bladder. Alright, so that's the end of the kidney dissection. Thanks for staying, friends. Here's a fun fact about kidneys to send you on your way. Did you know that if you stretched all the nephrons in one human kidney and laid them end to end, they would be around 40 miles or 60 kilometers long.